My Catholic Faith, Lesson 163, Minor and Major Orders. As an introduction to Holy Orders, a candidate receives a tonsure. The minor orders follow, porter, lector, exorcist, and acolyte. Then come the major orders, subdeacon, deacon, and priest. Finally, at his consecration, a bishop receives the fullness of the priesthood. Which are the minor orders? The minor orders are the lower ranks of the clergy, through which aspirants are prepared to receive the holy priesthood, porter, lector, exorcist, and acolyte. Minor orders were instituted by the church in the early days when men of outstanding merit performed certain offices. They are not a sacrament, but only preparatory steps to major orders. For the minor orders, the symbols of office are handed over to the aspirant with accompanying words constituting the form. Given to the porter is a key, with the right to guard over the church doors. To the lector, a book with the right to read certain passages of Holy Scripture when ordered by priest or bishop. To the exorcist, the book of exorcisms, with the right to exorcise evil spirits, and to the acolyte, a candlestick, with the right to carry lights and give wine and water at Holy Mass. Before minor orders, a man is constituted a member of the clerical state through the ceremony of tonsure, in which hair is cut from his head in the form of a cross, while he recites a verse from the Psalms to signify that he is dedicating himself to the service of God. By the tonsure, a cleric is incardinated or assigned to the diocese to which he will belong upon his ordination. He may not change to another diocese without the consent of his bishop and the bishop of the diocese to which he wishes to transfer. Which are the major orders? The major orders are the higher ranks of the clergy, subdeacon, deacon and priest. The subdiaconate is still a preparation for the sacrament of holy orders and is of ecclesiastical institution. A subdeacon is pledged to perpetual celibacy and the daily recitation of the divine office. The diaconate is the first or lowest degree in the sacrament of holy orders. The deacon receives sacramental grace. The deacon, if available, with permission from the bishop, may preach. He gives immediate assistance to the celebrant at High Mass. He may also expose and repose the Blessed Sacrament at benediction, and in case of necessity, distribute Holy Communion and baptise like priests do. However, nowadays, seminarians are being ordained subdeacons and deacons, spend in the seminary only a few months preparing themselves for their ordination to the priesthood. The priesthood is the second or middle degree in the sacrament of holy orders. By his ordination, the priest has the greatest power on earth, that of offering the holy sacrifice of the Mass, when he speaks Christ's words, This is my body, this is my blood. With the approval of the bishop, he may administer solemn baptism, extreme unction, and upon receiving the necessary jurisdiction, he can administer the sacrament of penance and matrimony and also confirmation to those in danger of death from serious illness. The episcopate, the highest degree in the sacrament, is the fullness of the holy orders, which gives the power of administering the sacrament of holy orders. A new bishop is consecrated by a bishop assisted by two other bishops called co-consecrators. The essence of the order of bishop consists in the power to ordain priests and to consecrate other bishops. Abbots and some priests may be given the faculty to administer confirmation and give minor orders, but only and exclusively a bishop can ordain deacons and priests and consecrate a bishop. Who is the minister of the sacrament of holy orders? The minister of the sacrament of holy orders is the bishop. The sacrament is administered by means of ceremonies that vary with the kind of orders conferred. It consists in the sign of the imposition of hands by the bishop, together with the accompanying words of ordination, 
varying with each respective order being conferred. The effects of the Sacrament of Holy Orders are an increase of sanctifying grace. One of the purposes of God for calling a man to the sacred ministry is to have him offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass. This is a most high office for the accomplishment of which God surely gives grace and more grace. Sacramental grace by which bishops, priests and deacons have God's constant help in their sacred ministry. The duties of God's ministers are innumerable and difficult. They must have sacramental grace. And God, who knows this well, certainly furnishes all necessary graces by the sacrament of holy orders. A character, lasting forever, which is a sharing in the priesthood of Christ and which gives special supernatural powers. Once a man is ordained deacon, priest, consecrated bishop, he is a deacon, a priest, a bishop forever. The sacrament imprints an indelible mark in the soul. It cannot therefore be repeated. The Need for Priests Jesus was going about the towns and villages, preaching the gospel and curing the sick. And seeing the crowds, he was moved with compassion, because they were dejected, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, Indeed, the labourers are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send labourers into his harvest. The labourers, priests, still are few. Christianity is not possible without priests. Chiefly because there are not enough priests, less than a third of the world is Christian. Many good Catholics who know their religion cannot receive the sacraments because there is no priest to administer to them. Insufficient instruction for lack of priests causes others to become indifferent. Such traditionally Catholic areas as Latin America, the Philippines and even Italy suffer from a scarcity of priests. In the United States, there are 825 counties exceeding the combined area areas of France, Germany and Great Britain, which are entirely without priests. Nearly 100 cities with 5,000 population or more have no resident priest. And in the missions, in vast India there is but one priest for every 80,000 people. In other countries there are still fewer. What can we do about it? Our Lord said. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send labourers. We have his assurance that he will be with us always, and that we have but to ask and it shall be given us. So if we lack priests, the fault is ours. We are not praying in the right way, or not using the means God provides, or both. It would be false to say that young men do not become priests because of the many temptations of modern life. It would be equivalent to say that God is not fulfilling his promises. God will send us priests if we pray with absolute confidence and cooperate with him. Perhaps we are not using the right methods according to our times to recruit more candidates to the priesthood. It must be a combined effort of all of us. Prayer, work and sacrifice. Lord, increase our faith. Send us priests. Hear us, O Lord.